All right, welcome back. Uh, this time uh, I'd like to give you a kind of a, a top level overview of the code uh, and just call your attention to a few key snippets, right, of things that you probably want to study if you're going to be um, doing similar things uh, in your own apps of, of similar complexity, right? Um, so key features from the starting code base. Uh, and I'm really going to focus on the, on, the, on the Firebase stuff, of course. Um, so overview again, real high level. You should notice the the overall structure. While there's there, there's a bit more to it than some of the apps that we've done in the past, uh, the the overall structure should be very familiar to you, right? So we're using a nav drawer again. So so no huge deal there. Um, lots of fragments, right? So I only have one activity and about five five or six fragments or so. Uh, two different kinds of authentication that you've used in the past. Um, rather than sort of putting a bunch of callbacks between the login fragment and main activity, we just put everything all in the login fragment, so it should be a little bit simpler for you. Um, all of the different fragments uh, have recycler views, as you saw, other than the, the login fragment, because uh, they're just holding a bunch of lists of things. So, so they, they, as far as what's in uh, each row, uh, nothing too complex. Mostly it's single strings, um, but a pre pretty simple model there. Okay. Model objects, everything you've, you've, you've seen all that before. Uh, and then basic Firebase uh, with child event listeners uh, is also something you've seen. And there's a fair number of those in the app as well. Okay. But let's, let's key into um, some more interesting things, right? And we'll kind of take it one class at a time, uh, looking at, at some of the key information. I'd like to start with maybe the stuff that's maybe a bit simpler, uh, but, but still very important, and then kind of work into some things that are a bit more complex. First thing is for students, all right? So we have a full CRUD interface. Uh, so, so as you can imagine, floating action button is going to add, long press is going to delete students, um, and then a, a, a swipe to delete. So let me uh, let me bring this up. It's probably it probably be a, a decent idea if I had uh, if I had this up to, to look at while we're, while we're talking through it. Okay. Um, all right. So kind of hold it off to the off to the side here, all right? Um, uh, not really room for it here. Well, I'll put it put it behind me here. Uh, so basically, um, like like we said, so I got a floating action button um, to add. Uh, doing a long press on one of these guys, right? Long press. If if I do that, um, then actually the the long press is to edit, right? And you'll see that um, that I can edit the information here. And I've actually done swipe on this. This is the only one that has swipe in it. Uh, but if we do a swipe. That'll delete it, but I can undo it, of, of course. All right, so didn't really mean to do that, okay? Uh, so what's going on? So I have a lot more than three students uh, in, in these things because each student has a whole bunch of, or each course has a whole bunch of students associated with it. Um, so I'm gonna take a, a look first at a query to only get students in the current course. So let's, let's, let's go there. Uh, into the code, uh, student list fragment, probably shouldn't be too surprised at, at some of what you see here, right? Um, so, uh, you know, floating action button, toolbar, all, all that kind of stuff, recycler view um, that keys into an adapter. Uh, so let's actually take this, this opportunity, jump into the adapter and see what we got. So up in the top here, uh, you'll see that when I construct the adapter, um, I'm, I'm passing in the course key, all right? Uh, where did I get that from? So let's see, course key. So I have a util method. Um, I'm actually I use the current course key frequently enough that I actually stored it as a, a shared preference. Um, so if you wanted to see that that code, um, not you know not not too much in there. Um, so this is get current course key and the kind of things that you would expect when dealing with shared preferences, right? So I uh, probably haven't done it since one of the early labs, uh, but you get your shared preferences and there's, there's a constant to to talk about them and then and then a mode. And basically, the key thing is 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 that we're going to be um, we're going to be calling get string on the prefs, um, and you give it a default. But otherwise, it's going to be pulling out the one uh, that's associated with with the course key. All right. uh, so we've we've got a course key. Um, the fragment takes that and it it's going to pass it into the adapter. Uh, and so we have the course key. We're going to save it off, and then here comes sort of the the key lines here, right? So I have a reference into my Firebase. Uh, to the student's path, right? And it's probably probably makes sense even to, to pull up the Firebase here. Um, so uh, so this is students. So um, students path is going to bring, bring me right here. Um, so I'm going to want a child event listener on on the students. 
right? Um, so I get these students. But again, I don't want all of them. I just want those that are associated with, with uh, the current course that I'm in. Right? Uh, so uh, the way that I do that is I'm going to use a query here. And um, calling the query students for course reference. Of course, kind of kind of good name here. Uh, and the way that I do that is I take my 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 reference here, and I'm going to call order by child student dot course key. So everything is going to be all sort of you know sorted by by course key. And what I really want are those uh, where the course key is equal to the course key that was passed in, right? So the key for my current course. Uh, and this right here is going to give us a, a you know a reference that we can add a child event listener to, but again, it's only going to be listening to um, to to any students, any CRUD operations on students that are uh, that are, have that particular key, right? Um, so you know, as far as what's after this, pushing, editing, removing. Um, all of this is stuff that you've seen before. Uh, there is some, some neat code here for hiding and undoing the hide. Uh, kind of similar, I guess Password Keeper had something similar to this. Um, it's just because of the swipe to delete. Um, and things are pretty straightforward here. Uh, I did take the child event listener and kind of kind of broke up the different things. So if it's added, I have a helper method to do the, the actual addition. And then I notify that it's changed. Um, and removing is kind of the same thing. I have, a, I have a helper method for each of those. And the reason I factor those out is that that for child change, um, you know, what we were actually doing is removing one and then adding another one back back in there. Um, so it's it's it it works um, for for child um, for that. And the reason that even that we did that is that we wanted it to resort. Okay, so we didn't want to just edit one in place because if they changed the name, then it would be in a different sort order. Um, so to do something like this kind of kind of made sense. Um, and adding, as we'll see right here actually takes care of the sorting. So that, that's what we wanted to do. But as far as the logic goes in those methods, nothing new from, from what you've seen in, in, in previous things like movie quotes and, and the more recent labs that you've done. Okay, uh, All very straightforward. Okay, uh, one more thing in here, uh, and that's the, the fact that, that this student fragment has the course key, but it doesn't have the name of the course. And what I want to be able to do is you know is, is say something like the students who are in, and I want the the course name to show up in the title here. Okay, uh, so how do I get that? Well, um, actually in my list fragment, okay, um, back here. So underneath the swipe to delete code at the bottom of the on create view, um, is I do a little query here, right? So I, so I actually um, get a Firebase course reference because again it's the course name that I care about. And I'm going to do something interesting here, right? So, so uh, first of all, I'm getting a course reference, so course singular, so the the reference to um, to the single course that I have. Back in my Firebase, this is going to look um, something like this. So courses, and one of these is the course that I, that I have. So maybe it's Android or whatever. Um, so this course right here, right? So I, so I get a reference to that place, right? And going back to my code. All right, then I'm going to um, to grab one of the children of that. In fact, the name child, right? Uh, again, we'll jump down here. So now we're actually at this place right here. So this place, and I'm going to set a listener on the value of name, right? Now this is not a child event listener. This is just really for a, a value, and this is turns out to be the simplest kind of, of listener that you can have for Firebase uh, at all, right? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a, a listener for a single event. Basically, I, I want to listen once, and then the listener goes away. It's going to listen once purely for the purpose of getting the course name. So I'm going to have this little course name value event listener that I'm going to attach to this guy. And I logged it here. But let's take a look at, at what I do. Here is the inner class right here, so, so this, this, this listener. Um, this is a little bit different than the child event listener. In fact, it's, it's a lot simpler. Uh, it doesn't have child added, child removed, all that kind of stuff. All it says is basically if the data has changed in any way, and that includes sort of viewing it for the first time, right? So, so it's you know just like when we when we first uh, we first sort of fire up a child event listener, we get uh, on child added, you know, boom, 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 for everything that's that's in the uh, in the in the along that path. Uh, so the, when we set up this this single event uh, or single value event listener, 
then it's just immediately if there's something there, it's going to fire and it's going to say, hey, we get some data. All right. And it's going to give us a snapshot. And the snapshot, again, is, is at a very specific place in there. Uh, it was referring to that, um, to that specific um, location associated with the key. And uh, what I'm going to do is take the data snapshot and get its value. Again, probably probably no surprise here, right? I was the data snapshot was was right here, key value, and I'm just going to get that value, and I'm going to use that um, in my um, in my toolbar, and I basically hey say hey hey toolbar, go ahead and set the title to be students in that course name. Okay, I just wanted to call your attention to that because that's the first time that you've seen this this sort of uh, you know a, a value event listener, okay, interface as distinct from the child event listener. Again, if you want more information, uh, all good documentation uh, in the in the Firebase site. All right, but I just wanted to give you a taste of that to see how you, how you might use that. Um, all right, so that's that's for students. Showed you a couple things there. For assignments, right? So assignments, we have a very similar interface. Um, I actually uh, I got lazy and, and didn't uh, I don't have swipe to delete on assignments. Um, in fact, I, I really want to to delete an assignment is maybe a bigger deal. So I actually have a confirmation dialog that, that pops up if we try to delete an assignment. But otherwise, the interface is pretty similar to students. Uh, very similar overall. Um, this whole thing about getting the course name. Uh, so I actually wanted to get that for students, owners, and another place. I think I've, eventually I'm preparing to put it in the uh, on the the nav header. Uh, so I wanted to refactor that into a utils method. So that looks a little bit different, but you're going to find that it's that it's much of the same stuff. So if I go into assignment list fragment here uh, and into here, so once I get a toolbar. Um, then I call this get current course name for toolbar. And what that's going to do is fire off in utils. Um, got a few different methods here. Uh, let's see. So I uh, get current course name for toolbar. And I want to take a look at this. And what do I want to do? All right. So um, I'm passing in a specific fragment. And I get the current course key. Uh, and I can get that from my shared preferences, so it's already there. And of course, I want to make sure that I have something; otherwise, I just have a, a, a blank, uh, blank uh, title. Otherwise, what you're going to see here, this is the code that I had in student, and really, student should get factored out like this. But I wanted you to see it kind of in both ways, sort of in context, and then and then factored out here. Uh, when we actually uh, detect that data is changed uh, within the, again the same place here, so this this specific location. Um, then uh, I'm going to have a callback associated with this, right? So fragment.set toolbar title. And this is my little interface here. All right, so whatever fragment called it has to implement this sort of fragment with toolbar uh, set toolbar title method, all right, that belongs to that interface. And if we want to take a look at that, we can. So assignment list fragment, uh, we can see that, it, that it's right here, uh, set toolbar title. And again, if it, if it came back null, I'd, I'd actually put a, put a title in there. Um, otherwise, then I would say, you know, these are the assignments for a particular course name. Right, so that's the first thing that's that's maybe interesting. Um, pretty similar to the, to the last one, just just factored a little bit differently. Okay, um, not really that much else exciting about assignments, right? So if if you were going to look at the assignment uh, adapter, you're going to see some things that are very similar, right? So if I go up to um, to the assignment adapter, we're going to see that I, that I have a course key again. Um, this one's actually passed in directly. Um, and what about this guy right here? So um, we set a, a reference to the assignments path, and then I have a query there, um, ordering it by, again, now this time it's the assignments course key that's there, and I'm going to grab the ones, again, that are equal to course key. Very, very similar to what you saw in, in student. And then I'll add my child event listener to that. Okay. Uh, great. There was some new stuff in here, so adding an assignment should also create great entries for every student in the course. So if you find in the adapter, uh, you know that. Well, actually, sorry. So so on when you hit your your fab button there, okay. So that there's it should trigger something else. Uh, and let's see where are we here. Um, so I'm going to go back to back to my assignments here. So if I create a new assignment, right. So at the time that it, you know when I finish this. And I click OK. It's going to do add um, add assignment. So let's let's actually do this here. So this is lab. We'll say maybe lab two, and lab two has a grade of ten. I think that's the default if I left it blank anyway. 
Um, so lab two pops up here. Um, you also want it to make grade entries because if you if you were going to click on this guy, uh, grade entries, um, then uh, you go in here and boom, you want it to pop up some grade entries. Again, you don't have this code because you're going to have to write it. All right, um, but you want it to, to grade it. So it should do that. And likewise, clicking on an assignment, you know, like I said, well, you just saw it, right? Uh, clicking on the assignment should swap in a fragment uh, that's going to show those great entries, all right? But again, those are things that are reserved for lab. All right, all right this uh, this video has gotten a little bit long, uh, so we'll we'll come back in the next lesson. We'll take a look at the, at the other classes, at uh, the courses and owners. Mm -hmm.